Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at wing loading and kind of what it does to the airplane. So let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, what is wing loading? Wing loading is when you take all the weight of the airplane and you divide it basically by the area of the wing. So you know, I've got 50 pounds per uh, cubic, feet, uh, cubic feet, why would it be volume? Uh, per square foot, or you know, if you're dealing with metric, you could have a certain number of kilograms or a certain number of tons with two ends per me uh, square meter. Basically, it's going to tell us what our stall speed is and a lot of other performance characteristics of the aircraft. And to get you an idea of how important wing loading is, we're gonna do kind of a double little demonstration. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take this aircraft off with minimal wing loading. So basically no payload, and we're gonna have about, oh, let's call it about 10% of our fuel reserves available here. So it's gonna be about, mm, let's call it that. It's about eight gallons of gas. It's gonna, it's gonna get us to the end of the runway and back. That's about it. We're gonna go ahead and use one click of flaps to be uh, kind of neutral here, and let's go ahead and take off. Fly full throttle, planes go, oh my God, the plane wants to go. So first thing we notice with a uh, low wing loading, again, this is low weight, not low wing loading. We have to get airborne actually experience wing loading. This thing takes off like a rocket. As a matter of fact, to lift the nose up, we are airborne. Look at that. You would think this thing was a Cessna 172 with performance like that because there's so little weight based on how much available wing we have. And you can see that thing sort of boing and bounced into the air. My climb right right now, I'm looking at... Woo boy! Uh, let's see here, I'll get to my VY of 100 knots, but I'm easily going to cross 2,000 feet per minute with that climb there, which is insane for this aircraft. Not to say it's not a good aircraft, it's just to say this is unlikely to get speeds that high. And again, this is because we don't have as much drag because the wing is not working as hard as it has to. Let's go ahead and bring up the rest of the flaps there. Pop them up. Pop, 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 pop it up. Oh my gosh, and now we go zipping away at full speed. Another impact on wing loading, and this is an important one, is going to be our stall speed. Pull the throttle back. I'm going to let the plane settle here. And we're going to see at what point the plane's like, eh, I quit. Give it a few moments here. Notice we're getting a big fat uh, gear warning alarm. It's just kind of giving us a heads up to say, hey, by the way. All right, 79, 78, 75. Still getting about 200 feet per minute there. 78, 76. Oh, boy. 72. There it is. Woo! Oh boy, I hit speed acceleration at the same time I went down instead of pause. So it looks like uh, the aircraft decided to stall at the speed of about 76, 77. So now the next problem we're going to have, and this is where things are going to start to get interesting, is going to come in the downside of having a low wing loading. And that's the fact that our maneuvering speed, which is the safe speed we can do dangerous maneuvers at, is going to be lower. And what do I mean by that? I mean, if we want to overstress this airplane, for example, if I want to do something stupid like this, flip it over like that, and go ahead and build up a lot of energy. Let's get a lot of energy in this dive. And we go pull back. Oh, there it is. Oh, we would have taken a wing off cleanly at a lower speed than if we had more weight in the plane. Now, the reason that happens in the real world is because, again, this little heavy body is being supported by these little wings, which means if this is a lightweight body, it's going to be going wee, supported by this, which is going to flex them way beyond their maximum limits, causing destruction. So what I'll do is I reset everything. We'll try it with a higher wing loading. All right. Let's go ahead and press up fuel. Go ahead and crank this thing up to maximum weight. Oh, yeah. That's what... What? What? Oh, 81 pound passengers. Okay, I had no idea how I could fit that many people. I noticed, by the way, the whole plane sank a little bit into the ground. So we're going to do the exact same experiment, and we're going to be doing it with a high wing loading. So I'm going to go ahead and give it full thrust here, and we're going to get going. Now, because we are heavier and we have more mass per unit of wing, our aircraft should uh, take quite a bit of a little extra speed here in order to compensate for that massive change here. So I'm going to get up to 68, go give it a tug. And we're going to go ahead and pop up into the air just like that. And we're kind of start making, oh my God, it doesn't want to climb. Oh my. <laughs> Come on. Come on. There it goes. Nice. So now we're going to get our climb in here, which uh, thankfully it started to kick in. I was uh, getting a little nervous there. I wasn't going to make it to the end of the runway. So the first thing you notice immediately is the fact that a moment ago I was climbing at like 18, 1900 feet per minute. Now I'm kind of abusing the plane a little bit and I'm getting significantly less even though I'm at my VY. That's because this aircraft has a lot more mass that it has to now lift. The next problem we're going to have is going to be our stall speed. So I'm going to pull that throttle back again like I did before. We're going to let the aircraft slow down. Now, here's the thing. We expect the stall speed to be higher. Remember, the first time we saw a stall speed at about 65. Now this aircraft, oh boy, I'm at 74 and it's already starting to wallow on me. Now we expect, the, oh my gosh, there it is. Whoa! 
So now we expect the aircraft to stall at a much higher speed, which in this case, it looked like it was just about 71, 72 when it decided to come out underneath me. Uh, did you notice, by the way, when the nose of the aircraft dropped that it wasn't a wing drop, the whole plane dropped? Uh, that is one of the interesting quirks is because the plane is heavier, it has more inertia, so it takes more effort to get it to do certain kinds of maneuvers. So you can already see the one downside to having higher wing loading is that our speeds are going to be higher. When we go to land this plane, for example, um, if we're that lightweight, this plane is going to go, whoa, and take the whole runway. If we're nice and heavy, I cut the throttle, the thing decides to stop flying. The next thing we're going to see is our maneuvering speed is going to change. Remember, that's the maximum speed, the VA, if you want to think about it, is going to be the maximum speed where we can safely do maneuvers or you know, penetrate turbulence or something like that. Because we are so heavy, it's going to require a lot more effort on the you know, part of the aircraft in order to build up enough force to actually put the wings in danger. So as before, you know, if I wanted to do something stupid where I like flip the plane over and uh, kind of do one of these kind of a things, pull the nose up, you would never do this over water because you can't see the ground. There we go. Pull up as hard as you can. Notice the aircraft just sort of mooshes. Oh boy. Come on. Come on. Nope, I'm going to die. Notice it got me into an irrecoverable stall there on account of the fact that because it was so heavy, I could not get enough lift out of the wings, even though I was pushing forward on the controls to actually break the stall. So you can see immediately the massive impact that has. Now, there's one other advantage that you get or one other thing to think about when you're dealing with a wing loading, and that's going to be dealing with turbulence. An aircraft with a high wing loading, meaning that you have a very little wing for how much you weigh, is going to be able to get through turbulence much easier than an aircraft that's lighter. To demonstrate this, let me go ahead and uh, pop this real quickly. I'm going to get this thing nice and level up real fast. We're going to set this to uh, altitude hold. I'll back that up just a little bit so that warning light goes off. Because, you know, if the warning light goes off, the emergency is avoided. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in some nasty turbulence here. So let's grab this. Unfortunately, there's no uh, universal turbulence button, which is, eh, it is what it is kind of a thing. I'll go ahead and close this out. Yeah, like I said, there's no, just click me for turbulence sort of a button. It's kind of a bummer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make the wind interesting. So let's make this 10 knots. So let's make it gusting 20. Let's make it really, 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 really gusty like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and unpause. So what we have now is we have ourselves this really nasty crosswind that is bouncing the airplane all over the place. Again, I'm not touching the controls right now. My autopilot is off. I just want to show you the impact of the turbulence that you're seeing right now. Now, this is with a very, very, very high wing loading. Remember, we're very, very heavy right now. So the wing has to work very, very, very hard in order to keep us steady. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back here. We'll go ahead and reset it the way we had it before. I'm going to drop my fuel capacity down to 4%. Now, I'll make it nice and light, and we'll go ahead and kill it, play a load completely. Now, because the aircraft has so much less mass, um, a little bit of wind goes a very, very long way. And uh, one thing I'm noticing, oh my gosh, notice my speed changes. Instead of being little bump, bump, bumps, are these massive bounds. And also notice the aircraft itself has uh, developed this kind of weird, oh my god, oh boy, whoa, easy. It's uh, developed this, oh my gosh, a kind of weird pitchiness to it because it is, again, you're defeating that inertia that much easier because of how much lighter you are. Now, of course, uh, we can't do a demonstration like this without having a little bit of fun, although I'm enjoying myself. Ooh, Cape Cod, by the way, in case anybody's curious where we are. Kind of like a Massachusetts thing going on this week. What happens when you try to land one of these aircraft with these loadings? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come around here. Line myself up at that lovely runway. We'll go speed up time extremely here. Whoa. One, two, three. Oh, apparently I'm having some engine problems here. Ah, I see the problem. We uh, seem to have had an engine failure. I guess I'm going to end up in the dunes here. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed this video because uh, I've run out of fuel and kaboosh. Ah! <laughs> so the key thing to keep an eye out for here is, again, as the aircraft becomes heavier, it becomes more stable in turbulence, it has a higher stall speed, and its maneuvering speed is significantly higher. As it is less based on the wing mass, you have to remember that you're going to be dealing with an aircraft that is going to be easier to overstress, it's going to be much more sensitive in turbulence, and it's going to have a significantly lower stall speed. Enjoy.